welcome to Digital Infra Network. I'm Seb Ozon, and in today's session, I will be chatting with Kyle Myers, who is the head of global environmental health, safety, and sustainability at Cyrus One, and we caught up to discuss the waterless data center. Kyle, welcome today. Welcome to the session. Very excited to be talking to you. How are you? Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, really good to have you here. And um, we're talking about the Waterless Data Centre. Can you just tell us how you got into this role of sustainability? Yeah, so, you know, I've been doing uh, environmental work for 20 plus years in, in a number of different industries, and I transitioned into the technology and in, in real estate space about five years ago. Um, so if you look at sort of how sustainability has progressed, when I look back when I went to school and I went to school for environmental, um, we were focused on things like um, acid rain and ozone. And so really the, the focus on climate change has really accelerated really in the past five years, I would say. Um, and then really the past two or three, it's accelerated to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sustainability. Everyone is talking about that five years ago. I mean, when we were starting out, it was sort of just peaking above the above the curtain, as it were. Um, so, getting into the data center, why do data centers typically use water? How much do they use? Yeah, you know. So when you think about a data center, um, you know, I think about data centers as an apartment, but instead of having you know people in them, they have computers in them, right? And so with, with sort of today's um, compute set, uh, every, every year, um, every, every few months really, um, computers and, and the servers that, that drive the compute um, get, get more and more powerful. And one of the results of that increased amount of power is they tend to generate lots of heat. And so as, as technology has improved, it's allowed sort of the servers to sort of shrink, but that means you're, you're increasing the density, meaning that you have more chips um, burning in a smaller area of space and they're giving off more heat. So data centers would typically, um, one of the prime focuses of data centers besides providing power to those servers is to keep the servers cool. Mm. And uh, how's the, the, the water sourced, how's it treated? Yeah, so if you look at, um, there, there's sort of two extremes when it comes to technology for, for keeping the, the, the environment cool where the servers are working. Uh, on one end of the spectrum, there's the water consuming technology. So it's typically generically referred to as evaporative cooling. And so what you basically do is you take the heat and you remove the heat by um, taking the water from a liquid form to a, to a gaseous form and, and, and it evaporates um, at large scale, massive amounts of water. The other extreme to this, and there's lots of technologies sort of in the middle, um, but is using no water consuming technology, which is the technology that um, Cyrus One favors, which we basically use air to cool the servers um, instead of using um, a, a fluid media such as water, you know. So the if you're not if you're using water, uh, for example, if you're using water towers, which is is historically sort of a popular way to use evaporative cooling, then you have to deal with water treatment issues because basically you're 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 distilling down or concentrating the byproducts that are in that water. So if you think about the average tap water, it's going to have minerals in there. It's going to have minerals and um, minerals and metals in there. Um, plus you're going to use chemicals to use it to treat that water. So you don't get like, um, you don't get bacterial buildup within the, uh, the systems themselves. So you take all of that and concentrate in a real small pool. You send that to the municipal water treatment system. They oftentimes struggle to, to treat that. Um, and it could do damage to their like anaerobic um, digesters, for example. Mm. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, Phoenix Chandler uh, campus. Yeah, so so Phoenix um, at, at one point, and I think our, our presence in, in Northern Virginia is now larger than, than Chandler, but this is at one point was our largest campus and one of the largest data center campuses in the US. Um, so we have at full build up, we'll have eight um, facilities there, um, but that entire campus is water consumption free when it comes to the, the, the cooling capability. 
So we do generate water for things like uh, humidification purposes and then for like um, bathrooms or, you know, gray water. Um, but most of the water consumption um, from a typical data center would come from the cooling um, design. So if you look at a campus that size, um, if we used evaporative cooling, we would be consuming around 15 million gallons of water a month in a very arid, um, obviously dry, drought prone region of the country. It's an amazing amount of water. So how much water do you save? So we're uh, for cooling purposes, we use zero, right? So we do use a little bit of um, water again for humidification and for like, uh, again, break rooms or, or bathrooms within the, within the facility. But, you know, the common metric that, that most people in the data center industry use to sort of measure water is WUE, right? Which is the water um, utility. So it's similar to PUE, which measures, you know, power efficiency, but it's a liter of water per kilowatt hour of server use is what that, that number distills down to. So we average with our Chandler design, a WUE of 0 0.04, um, which is exceptionally low. So within the co-location industry, the average WUE is 0.57. So several multiples um, larger on average. If you look at just the hyperscalers, um, they averaged in 2019 3.48 as the WUE, wow. which was actually up from 3.2 the year before. So there's they they use um, a lot of water to cool their servers. Wow! And uh, what was the process behind this drive at Cyrus One? Can you tell us a little bit about the challenges that you encountered? Yeah. And honestly, like Chandler was sort of the genesis for our, our water um, saving strategy. So when we went to go into Chandler, and this was this was before my time at the organization, but our COO, John Hayden, tells a great story. We went uh, and, and sort of met with uh, Maricopa County and explained sort of the size of the campus and what some of the requirements would be. Chandler says, you can have all the power you want, just don't use our water. Um, so that really cemented to us um, in terms of what we were gonna use as a design going forward, that waterless cooling or water consumption free cooling was the answer in Chandler and it, began, it became our answer um, across most markets where we operate. Mm. And are we seeing the widespread adoption of these ideas in different regions by other operators? Yeah, I mean, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. Um, I, I certainly think that there's a lot of visibility on it now. I mean, you've seen articles again. Um, I won't. I won't name any names, but you know, a number of large operators, particularly the hyperscalers, have, have sort of made headlines with either you know the cities struggling to process their, their wastewater because of again the concentration of, of of chemicals and other materials, or just the massive consumption of water. So you know, our our philosophy and the strategy that we've adopted is we do operate in, in high water risk areas. So we sort of differentiate between a high water risk area and a non-high water risk area with the thought being, if water is plentiful, it's not a big a deal from our point of view. And I think most would share this point of view if you do consume a lot of water. Um, but anywhere that's high water risk is where we're, we're really focused on not just minimizing our use, but offsetting any of our use. And the cool thing about it is we've seen lots of folks sort of adopt the same strategy. So it's definitely getting a lot more momentum, um, but I don't think it's, it's, it's a common, um, I don't think it's a common approach quite yet. Okay. And on that, also on that tip, how does geographical location play a part in the practicalities of a, a waterless data center? Can you just elaborate a little bit further on that? Yeah, so when you think about, um, when you think about where you're setting up, um, you really do have to give a lot of thought, not just to the type of technology you use for cooling again, which is where you're gonna pull in most of your power consumption beyond just the servers. Um, but you do have to look at the availability of resources, right? So um, the, the strategy that we use, and this has become you know, more and more common, is we look at just water availability in the market we're at, right? So if there's, if there's plentiful water and we're looking at like a high density deployment, meaning that, you know, that there's going to be a lot of um, heat generated in a very uh, small area, then we may look look at different types of cooling solutions. We may look at the evaporative cooling technologies, for example, that use less water than full evaporative um, because that helps drive down the, the power utilization a little bit. So you get more efficiencies from a power perspective by consuming some water. 
If, however, water um, use we expect to be restricted or it's high risk in that area, then there's then there's both how you're going to impact um, the community in which you operate, which we all have to be cognizant of. But you have to look at the other side of this, which is the risk to the business. So if your water um, was limited, your water consumption was limited or, or cut off, and you were dependent upon that water to cool your system, well, you have a you have a real business continuity issue, right? So data centers are basically set up with resilience in mind, hence the backup generators and all the backup capabilities we have. So we look at water con uh, water consuming free technology is not just good for our impact to the environment, but from a risk resilience perspective. Mm. Is it a straightforward task to retrofit, say, existing facilities with this type of system? Yeah, I mean, so we've we've done some retrofits in our own portfolio. So some of our campuses, for example, had had sort of hybrid technologies where we, we tested different types of evaporative cooling or adiabatic or or zero water consumption. In every market where we've had mixed, we either have switched out to zero water consumption or we're in the process of it. So it is relatively straightforward in terms of it can be done. Um, the problem is it's hugely capital intensive. And then if you have an operating data center, um, then you have to be cautious about um, you know, transitioning your, your cooling technologies. And then you know, another challenge is if you're looking at you know, hot weather environments, you know, so if you're, if you're moving closer to the to the equator where you expect the, uh, the surrounding environment to be hot and you have high density deployments, then it gets even trickier um, to not use water consuming technology. So it can be done, it's capital intensive. Um, so, so timing is often important when you're looking at end of life of the equipment. Okay, now as a takeaway, um, how does this align with your other sustainability goals and your journey to become a, a net zero company? Yeah, I mean, like the water consumption piece is critical, right? So, you know, I, I think from a sustainability perspective, most of the focus is and will continue to be on climate change. And, and again, if you think about climate change in two ways, there's there's sort of, you know, two sides of the same coin. So on one hand, you have your impact to the environment. So that, that sort of starts with your greenhouse gas production. And, and so there's lots of work that we're all doing around, you know, minimizing or completely eliminating your greenhouse gas footprint. Um, another component of that is obviously water consumption, which I would say right now is sort of the second biggest topic as it applies to data center sustainability. We look at what this is going to look like in 10 years. Um, the expectation, if you look at what most of the goals that a lot of the data, at least the leading data center operators have set, is many of us will be at zero um, in terms of uh, climate impact, in terms of greenhouse gas, I'm sorry, production. And so we fully expect that water is going to become the main issue. And so we think that um, this really aligns well with sort of what, what the future of sustainability is. And then the other side of that coin, which I already mentioned uh, earlier, is just the resilience perspective. So we, we fully expect, you know, let's look at the southwest of the U.S. Um, we keep getting a grimmer and grimmer picture painted of water availability in all-time lows and, and lake levels and, and droughts. Of hitting. So we expect um, that, you know, we're going to see more and more challenges with the ability to be able to get adequate supply of water to, to, um, to continue to cool data centers. And, and so we, we fully expect that, um, that our uh, technology uh, adoption is going to be a key differentiator for us from a risk resilience perspective. And that we're just, we're ideally, you know, at least from a water um, drought perspective, we're sort of ideally situated to sort of maintain operations and have that um, minimally impact us. Really interesting stuff. Listen, Kyle, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. We really appreciate that. And um, I look forward to catching up again in the not too distant future. But for now, Kyle Myers at Cyrus One, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for the opportunity, appreciate it.